Welcome back to The Breakfast and our first major conversation this morning. We are moving to the discussion on uh, Justice Mary Odili's house. The police has said that they arrested about 14 suspects. Uh, one of them claims to be a police officer working for the Attorney General of the Federation of Abaka Malami. In response, of course, the Attorney General has said that he is not aware of anyone working for him and he's a drowning man looking for who to pull down with him. The police statement also says that it's a combination of fake police officers, fake journalists, fake EFCC um, agents, fake everything, uh, you know, that uh, planned together and, of course, uh, stormed Miss Justice uh, Odile's residence as investigations uh, continue. This morning, we're joined by Kasim Afegboa. He's a former commissioner for information in Edo State and a former spokesman uh, to uh, Ibrahim Badamusi Babangida. Good morning, Mr. Afegboa. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning. All right. Um, yes, absolutely. A lot of people are still stunned as to the revelations from the Nigerian police and the investigation into this case. Um, some people, of course, have said that this is, you know, just a lot of, of stories that don't make any sense. Um, so let, let's get to your thoughts, first of all, on the police statement saying that these are a couple of fake agents that stormed Justice Odili's residence. Do you agree or do you believe that that is possible? Well, I, I think I have my reservations about the present revelations. You know, the incident happened right at the heart of Maitama in Abuja, which is just barely a kilometer from the police headquarters, so to speak. And uh, I remember I was on air, you know, on AIT, when that news broke that people have invaded the residence of Justice Odele. A proactive police force would naturally have arrested those guys right at the scene of the incident because they, they, they waited there for quite some time. And so now that we are coming up with names, 14 names of persons who are fake uh, CSP and what have you, it goes to show that, God forbid, that woman will have been killed and it will have been another scenario of unresolved murder, God forbid. But it, it goes to tell you that there is so much of disconnections and dislocations in our security formation in this country. If such a thing could happen at the heart of Abuja for, for not one minute, not two minutes, not five minutes, for minutes that were, were enough for the police to mobilize to arrest those guys at the scene of crime. So for me, all these present this, uh, parading for ten people, nobody is ready to own up to their responsibility of what happened that day, goes to show that we are all, we are all in endangered times. And it's quite unfortunate. Okay, so but let's uh, you know, dig further. Do you think it's possible to have please, fake police officers among others get a search warrant overnight to invade the house of Justice Mary Orderly. Is, well, is that a possibility? See, because we're talking about court warrant here or search warrant. So how possible yeah. is that? You see, even the issue of even the issue of search warrant was laughable. What we saw on social media was a search warrant from a particular magistrate called uh, uh, writing house number nine and not house number seven that belongs to Justice Mary Odele. So whatever be the motive of this process, whether they have a search warrant, they don't have a search warrant, such an invasion is not only barbaric, it's not only British, it goes to underscore the failure of security in this country. And I'm saying that at the scene of, at the scene of that crime, alarms you know, were raised. And I was expecting the police at that point, if they are not culpable, to have gone to make arrests on the spot. Because I know good spirited individuals rush to that place to go and you know, give some kind of succor to the woman. But we didn't see Nigerian police. And nobody called up. Police say no. Uh, ministry, Justice Ministry said no, DSS said no, ESCC said no, 
In a country, in the heart of Abuja state of government, my Tama is just one kilometer from police headquarters. And yet, now you are parading for three persons saying they, are, they did this, they did that. For me, for me, I think we need to, we need to face, you know, very basic facts. The point is, as Nigerians, this government should wake up to provide what is expected of them. Enshrined in the 1999 Constitution, Chapter 4, provision of welfare and security and protection of lives of the citizenry. When a highly placed Nigerian, a justice of the Supreme Court, could be subjected to this kind of barbaric treatment, then what will happen to people like us who are, who, who, who are at the lower rung of the, of the ladder? Mr. Fekwa, well, you, you made a mention, you know, that uh, if the police are not culpable, are you, are you saying that there's a possibility that the Nigerian police knows exactly what happened and are simply trying to, you know, deny their involvement in this, uh, in this uh, case? Uh, and what could be the underlying situation here? Because people have mentioned that this is, is simply bullying or, you know, a way to bully Justice Odili uh, for some reason or the other. You see, every, you know, in every human society, there is a tendency to commit crime, which, which is why you have a police force in place, so that they will think ahead of crimes and criminality. If you don't have information, you don't gather intelligence about your operations in the heart of Abuja, the seat of government, Barely a kilometer to the seat of power, to the to Asso Villa, a barely a kilometer to uh, the police headquarters. Then it behoves on the police to please apologize to Nigerians for failing to provide the necessary security support to citizens that populate the city of Abuja. That is one. Secondly. You see, it is not even about a person in blame. If the police were to be a functional police system, we, 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 we thought at the scene of that crime, those guys would have been arrested. Because they, 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 they spent some time there. They spent some time and, and telephone calls were made to the relevant authorities. Yet, what did they see? You are coming two weeks later to, to parade people. You can parade them, no problem. But it will be sweeter for you to arrest these guys at the scene of the incident. Because by this, person, this person has got to hire lawyers. They will start defending that they were not there. You may not have CCTV footage. You may, have, you may not have other things. But if they, had, they were arrested at the point of committing that crime, it would have been more, more you know, uh, commend, commendable. So when I leave, I leave this thing for the police to please take the necessary action to protect, you know, citizens, guarantee their security, so that we can live in peace and harmony. We know that the country is heavily troubled. We know that the police are heavily stressed. We know that even the army are overstretched. We know that DSS are overstretched. It is because certain things are not being done rightly. We are not proactive, we are only reactive. If this one has happened now, we are reacting. It is because, it is because, uh, what is it called, uh, Justice Obili is involved in this case. There was an incident that happened about a week ago where somebody was killed and thrown into the canal in Lagos. A director in FAAN, that is Federal Air Force Authority of Nigeria, up to now, we've not had anything from police. So there are quite a number of issues to raise. But, you know, this is, this is Nigeria, where almost everything goes. Okay, um, let's further um, look at the fact that if, I mean, according to the narrative, uh, there was a tip-off, and that's why, of illegal activities ongoing in the residence of Justice Odili. Now, let's assume that that's anything to go by. What is the standard procedure? Who should have gone? What is expected? Should the EFCC, um, should we have the EFCC or the DSS or the police 
who should be involved in the search and warrant? You see, uh, my sister, we are not running against a system. A system where there is, you are trying to uh, carry out an action. You are also violating the fundamental human rights of a renowned citizen of this country. What difference does it make? If you had written a letter to Justice Odili inviting her to appear before any of the either anti corruption, either all these midnight invasion is peculiar with this government. Don't forget that it happened before now. Three years ago, the justices were, you know, were and arrests were made. So whatever excuse that this president one is going to have, we will be drawing inspiration from what they did have been issued, because it is peculiar with this government to carry out midnight raids. And that's quite unfortunate. Where it's very barbaric. In civilized crime, you will invite persons, irrespective of whether you have such warrant or not, a person who is a savage justice of the Supreme Court, cannot be a fugitive to the law, no matter how you see it, no matter the crime, no matter the offense, do things in a more civilized manner so that we can have a breather. There's too much of lawlessness in this country. There's too much, there, are, there are too many cells, power cells, individuals that will be power, unconscionable power, power that you know, are ordinarily beyond the scope you know, of their own uh, uh, duties. So for me, it is a breakdown of law and order that you can have such an incident halfway in the heart of Abuja and leaving us almost helpless. Just like I said earlier, if the woman had been killed, what story are we going to be saying? All right. Uh, so now uh, let's also talk about the involvement uh, of the Attorney General of the Federation. Uh, the prime suspect there says that he works for Abubakar Malami, but the AGF, of course, has denied it, saying that he's a, is a case of a drowning man scavenging for a dying partner. Um, do, does this in any way also indict the AGF? My, my sixth sense reminds me that it would be utterly impossible for people who just invade the resident of such a high place Nigeria without getting motivation from some persons in power. Now, you, you, you have helped my case by the scenario you just painted, that Malami is denied. Somebody is saying he's a consultant to Malami, Malami is denied. All these deniers should not have a reason if those guys were arrested right on the spot. And they are questioned immediately, why are you invading the residence of this justice of the Supreme Court? But because, because uh, it's taking us two weeks but for us to come to this uh, situation now, you are, going, you are going to be hearing all manners of stories, accusations, counter accusations, and before you say Jack Robinson, this matter will be sought under the carpet. I'm saying that. We need a functional police system. We need a, a proactive police system, not a reactive one. Particularly in Abuja, where you have smooth roads, you have vehicles for the police headquarters, where you have information, where you have intelligence, because both the DSS, both police, NIA, Army, all of them, the headquarters are in Abuja. And they are barely one, 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 one kilometer, one and a half kilometers from this woman's residence. So my mind is just that I want to thank God on behalf of Justice Mary Odili for her life and for being able to remain stoic to the point that she was able to raise alarm and call some people who immediately drove to the scene of incident. And because it would have been a different story altogether if she were to have been killed, uh, today we'll be singing stories, you know, of uh, claims and uh, counter claims, accusations and uh, counter accusations. May God continue to prolong our lives.
Yeah, but, but, Mr. Fegwa, is, isn't this one controversy too much for uh, the Attorney General of, of the Federation? Um, it, it feels like every three weeks maximum, there is something new that he's involved with, something really controversial. Um, and so is this, you know, would you expect, you know, that at a time like this, he should pr probably be asked to step down? The NBA, the Nigerian Bar Association, has made mention of, you know, possibilities of, you know, taking away his uh, senior advocate of Nigeria title and some of all of that. But you know, shouldn't this be enough for actual questions to be asked of the AGF? You see, when you have a government that does not have its hand on the job of leadership. That is why you see a creation of subnational leadership that want to assume the powers of the president. No doubt the Attorney General is very, very powerful in this government because there is crack incompetence in the system, there's lack of capacity. So everybody is dropping the name of the commander in chief. Oh, I, I, the president says I should do this. The president says I should do this. The general says I should do this. So, because we hardly hear from the president, it's not interactive, it's not conversational, it doesn't dialogue. So, uh, persons who are occupying certain sensitive positions in government who want to play the role on behalf of the president. So, the attorney general has become one of consciousness power by confronting powerless conscience. We are powerless, but we have conscience. So for me, it is what you have as a government that is giving rise to this kind of consciousness power. So I'm expecting that the NBA should go into this without equivocation and take the right steps to right the wrongs. It may be just as orderly today. It may be you and me tomorrow. What is crucial is for us to begin to realize that there is a government in place and there is a functional police system in place that will rise up to the occasion. But because this government is notorious for invasion, having done that to a lot of judges of the, of the courts, it becomes very difficult for us to extricate them and extricate the Attorney General from the present reality. And that is where I will rest this case. Okay. Now, um, let's just stay with the issue of the NBA, I mean, the response. Uh, a lot of persons have described this as an attack on the judiciary and democracy, however, and that the response of the NBA is not enough. And they've also said that the NBA is a toothless dog. Um, do you think it's okay for those who are saying that uh, there should be a call that the Attorney General of the Federation should resign? Uh, you know, Nigerians, Nigerians don't, ever, don't ever resign. <laughs> I remember when uh, I resigned my appointment in 2009 as Chief President to Adam Sashomoli. People said, are you mad? What's wrong with you? The only five months into the government you are resigning? I said yes, because I do not see that this will fulfill my aspirations. The work environment wasn't you know, conducive for me. So I took, I took a honorable exit. But in this climate, you hardly see people res resigning from positions. So anybody calling on the attorney general who is so powerful, who to me is more like, or less like an alternate president, cannot expect the Attorney General to resign. But it's a good call. The NDA should mount further pressure and take the rightful step to ensure that this attack on the judiciary is addressed once and for all. And it's also a reminder to the judges and justices of the Supreme Court that they should not continue to cultivate all manners of bestialities in the way a manner they dispense with justice. They should wake up to save the Nigerian Federation by delivering judgment and giving bodies that are grounded in law and not in politics. So, this is a collective responsibility on all of us.
grant the judiciary some level of, of autonomy, financial autonomy, so that they don't go cap in hand, begging all the time for finances that they will use to run the operations of the judiciary. We are three arms of government, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. They should operate independent of one another uh, in terms of financial autonomy so that they will have the confidence to take decisions that will have far-reaching positive impact on the psyche of the ordinary Nigerian. All right. Um, um, Mr. Afegba, what um, should we expect next from the police if we, of course, uh, we're working in a sane you know, environment. Would we expect that these persons should be fully prosecuted and, um, of you know, of course, uh, serve time if, if that's what the, the law says? Of course, they will be prosecuted. They will, they will take lawyers and they want to be defended and all that. I just want a situation where certain persons are not sacrificed on the altar of trying to protect somebody's job. I want the police to do a thorough job. I trust the capacity of the present IG to rise up to the occasion. And you must let Nigerians know exactly what the issues are. They must be transparent in the investigation. They must be open to all of us. It must not be conducted in secrecy. And they should also avail those uh, who have been arrested the opportunity for us to hear from them so that public things are not kept under wraps. So are you saying that it's possible that the 14 persons that have been paraded by the police could be taking the fall for others? It's not about, it's not, yes, you know, any, anything is possible in this country. Nigeria has stopped amazing me because what you think is impossible, you see it happening right before our very eyes. And before you say Jack Robinson, the issues become that of the past. What I'm saying is, is that you must be transparent as a police force to ensure that you carry the public along. There are so many unresolved murder cases all over the place. There are persons who have been arrested. What has been the outcome? So what I'm saying is that for invading somebody's privacy, such a hard facility in the society, and uh, for past other persons who have been arrested, I just pray that they are not being sacrificed for the other protecting somebody's health. Absolutely. Kasim Afebwa, the of course former commissioner for information at those state and uh, former spokesperson for Ibrahim Badamasibo Bangida. Thank you so much. I am not I am not former spokesman. I'm still spokesman. Oh, still the, spokesman. Uh, Apologies. Please correct me. Apologies, Mr. Afebwa. Thank you so much for Thank your time you. this morning and we wish you a beautiful weekend. Thank you for coming through. All right. Stay with us. Our next conversation takes us to talk in health care, COVID-19, and of course, uh, what next um, as a country with regards preparations for um, health emergencies. We'll talk about it when we come back. Stay with us.